see my oh sorry why it's here from the sec let me start from the beginning it just was my small check here okay so um before we dive into the pedantic world and talk about our serialization validation stuff uh and settings management in the pedantic let me uh, introduce myself in a bit. So I am, um, as uh, our um, Adriana told you, uh, a, soft, a Python a software engineer, senior software engineer in the SoftServe. And I am uh, working on the project uh, that is uh, immersed into ETL. Um, and we've been faced with some situations where we need to use some stuff uh, to validate and serialize our data that is going uh, across our uh, models, our response and requests, uh, um, our conversations from the database uh, into uh, simple uh, Python classes and objects and so on. And in scope of that work, we found out that Pydentic is actually a real uh, treasure here because it helps us much in this uh, area and uh, that's why actually we've took uh, some work on Pydentic uh, for all our uh, services for a while and I would like to share how it help us, helped us and which useful um, features it actually has. So let's start from agenda what we are going to talk about today and the main themes are what is Pydentic, uh, why Pydentic, uh, Pydentic models, Pydentic fields, uh, validator, serialization, and one of my favorite themes is Pydentic settings management and how it can help you to maintain your application robust and to follow 12-factor uh, application approach. So let's start from the beginning and talk a bit about what is Pydentic. So Pydentic actually is a Python library for that data validation and settings management that's based on a Python type hints. Uh, it allows you to define uh, how data should look in pure canonical Python and helps you to validate it with uh, Pydentic models. It is fast extensible and uh, plays really nice with your linters, uh, IDA platforms, or even your brain. Yes, your brain, because it's reduced uh, some um, hard uh, thinking on uh, things that are related to the validation and the serialization. So the Pydantic can help you even with that. So what about key features of uh, Pydantic? Why actually we need to use Pydantic? Um, Pydentic is easy to use because it's simple and intuitive. Um, it's it require uh, requires minimal boiler boilerplate and con configuration. Uh, as I said previously, it works fine with uh, different EDAs like PyCharm, Visual Studio, MyPy, and so on, and it helps you to uh, correctly lint and uh, highlight your code. It's also uh, is fast in validation. Oh, give me this one, laser pointer. It's also fast in validation because Pydentic validation is written in Rust, and that's why it's one among of the fastest uh, libraries uh, in Python for the validation. It also uses the JSON schema, uh, and because uh, Pydentic models can emit JSON, JSON schema, uh, it allows you for easy integration with other tools and even such things like you know um, automatic uh, documentation stuff. It's it also has custom validation rules. So for example, if um, simple type hints are not enough for you or uh, base Pydentic fields are not enough for you, you can use uh, additional validation rules that you can write yourself for your specific case. Uh, we will look into it a bit in future, uh, further in the pre presentation. Uh, easy serialization, uh, same here. Here, Pydentic seamlessly converts data into objects. Um, 
actually into Dict mostly and into JSON. Uh, more with uh, um, approach on simplifying simplifying data exchange between different parts of your application or even external system, which is very useful for REST and uh, other um, approaches. User-friendly errors. So Pydentic provides uh, informative and readable error messages uh, when validating uh, files or valid when validation fails. Uh, when, uh, for example, uh, we have uh, different problems with location type, uh, invalid types, uh, input errors, and so on. It, so it provides really cool stuff on validation, uh, validation and error handling and helps you to understand what went wrong and where you can look more info on that specific error. And the last one, but not the least, the ecosystem. Um, uh, Pydentic is used around uh, more than 8,000 packages. Um, it is also massively um, used in such libraries like uh, Fast, Fast API, um, uh, SQL model and so on and so on. So lots of stuff that are common in our modern Python, uh, Python development. Um, now let's actually dive into basics of Pydentic models. And in short, I will uh, show you main features of Pydentic here and, and their models and how it actually works and which outcome we get when we use Pydentic models. So Pydentic model uh, imports, uh, um, extends the base model class, um, which actually can contain uh, and understand several other classes like both uh, Pydentic other models and uh, regular uh, Python uh, classes, uh, data classes, and other stuff like that. So in this example, we are creating something called uh, student class, which has several fields. And as you can see, uh, we are, making it using uh, Python annotations with uh, simple um, types here, also with uh, another class like this one account, Pydentic class, also using the um, enum Python. And except of that, Pydentic can also use any other your own class uh, with a small model configuration uh, thing that we will look into later. Uh, also, Pydantic provides us uh, with a special helping tools for the validation on fly, so-called fields. So fields are actually some uh, helpers for our uh, field, uh, fields, attributes on the class, which helps us to define some categories and constraints on your date. For example, we have here an age field, which is an integer, and we have here a field constraint called greater or equal 17. So we cannot have a student that is, for example, uh, younger than 17 years old. We have a name constraint, string constraint here, that is uh, that is using pattern here, a regular pattern um, re rejects. Uh, which, uh, for example, constrains us for using names uh, that uh, consist not only from the alphabetic uh, uh, symbols, but other things like Elon Musk's uh, child, like A12, for example. This is just a small joke here. Um, so when we look into the actual outcome of this model, we will see some... Um, helpful things like um, Pydentic representation, string representation that is already done for us. For example, here when we call just a print student, we will uh, have information about the whole class, except fields that can be excluded from the representation uh, or from the model itself. For example, um, here we in this model have a gender which is a string uh, and has a special represent, a rapper, uh, field attribute of the field that uh, is uh, set to false. So it means that this field will not be uh, shown on the output. Um, 
also, for example, we have uh, Pydentic uh, own fields, uh, not the fields, but uh, types, so-called Pydentic types that are used uh, to validate and convert your incoming um, arguments and uh, into the Pydentic world. For example, we have so-called email string, which checks and validates your incoming string that it, it is actually the email, uh, the correct email. Also, we have, for example, secret string, um, a special pedantic type, which helps us, for example, to hide from the um, standard output um, info on our passwords, for example. And uh, oh. we will see this uh, hidden secret password here. Sorry. And uh, here. Uh, can I have a question regarding this uh, secret string? What uh, uh, what is uh, like working under the hood? What what is done with the secret here? It's hashed somehow, or what methodology? No, it's just uh, a class that is used by Pedantic, which is um, uh, converts the wrapper method, and that's all. If you look into the inner code, so here it will be like this one. When you will do um, conversation uh, conversion, sorry, into the string, you will get uh, not in the string. For example, into the dict like model dump, you will get the representation of this class uh, and this class, and in the but JSON this, you will give just. Yeah, but this this, this password will be somehow uh, like hidden or uh, encrypted. Let's say encrypted or hashed or it's, whatever. Or it it's not be... encrypted. No, it's not encrypted. It's just hidden from the representation. So okay. uh, you can still use it in your code, like, uh, but with a special approach, like for example, get secret value, blah blah blah, from your password. Right. I will okay. show it uh, if you uh, later in the code. Okay. So for example, if you want to dump it into JSON, uh, you will have some. Um, not the problem, but uh, uh, this secret password will be hidden here and shown like these uh, uh, stars, like several stars. We will look into how serialize uh, for mm, dumping into dicts and JSONs later in the code. And if you want, actually, you can hash it uh, using those serializes. So serializes are the functions that will help you to uh, hide the code, uh, do whatever you want with it, and so on. We will talk a bit uh, about it later. The short answer, uh, no, secret string is not hashing. Um, the string is just hides it from the representation on your um, output, standard output, or in your uh, JSON or dict. OK. Um, also, Pydentic models have uh, so-called default stuff. This is a thing that will be used um, instead of, for example, when you don't provide any uh, data, these default things will be used for your code. For example, we have a default student. Uh, as you can see, I'm not setting here any of the student uh, field. So in further, it's, uh, it, it comes uh, default title student. We also can use uh, functions for our um, for our uh, defaults, like a default factory. Here we're using hacks from UUID, uh, and if nobody provides us ID, it uh, creates it uh, by itself, as you can see it here. Um, and we can use a simple, just like without fields, this representation of the defaults, and it will work fine, like in other. Uh, Python classes. Talking about Pydantic error messages. As I told you, Pydantic has a very um, nice representation of errors that are happening in your code. For example, here we are trying to create a model uh, from the dict, mm, uh, not the, from the dict, sorry, from the JSON. So firstly, we are using dict, then we dump it into JSON. And then we use so-called model validate JSON uh, method. Uh, a bit about this method. So Pydantic um, states that uh, it's not instantiating um, objects. It actually do uh, does uh, Pydantic does two things, like the first instantiating and second validating, and then updating instantiation object with uh, that uh, stuff that it was validated to. 
So that's why when we are calling about when we are talking about creating the um, pydentic objects, we are in pydentic world naming it like validate. So like validate JSON means to create an um, pydentic model from JSON or valid pro just model validate means uh, create a pydentic uh, model from another pydentic model or from the object. Um, as you can see here, we have several errors like age um, input should be greater than equal to 17. We have a link to the error description here. We have other errors uh, saying that string should match pattern, like uh, email doesn't contain um, this uh, special symbol. Uh, and even deep inner objects that live in Pydantic are also validated, like account password. For example, here we need we, we should provide actually the password, but we forgot to provide it, and it states like the pro account password is required, but it's not here. Same for the gender. Uh, as you can see in the previous um, slide, we are using here a strict um, parameter for the field, which means that the data that is uh, given to the uh, Pydentic model uh, should be strictly the same as uh, is described in this annotated type. Uh, usually, Pydentic has its own rules for uh, converting the data that you give into the um, um, described uh, types. For example, if you provide a Boolean or an integer into this uh, model, it, will, it would be converted into the string. But since I'm using the strict mode here, uh, it means that in case if I provide the Boolean here, it's not a string and it states input should be a valid string. Um, yeah, one more thing for each slide, uh, I have here um, links to the docs that will help you to dive deeper into those things. Okay, now let's talk about pydentic fields that you've seen on the previous slide. So pydentic, uh, fields have lots of things there. It's actually so huge that I will not show you all of these features in this presentation. But let me just um, describe uh, some of them. It's just the tip of that iceberg. So we have one cool feature in Pydantic fields uh, called alias. It's very useful, especially when you're trying to convert data from ORM or other uh, ORM based classes or other things that use uh, different from um, Python uh, notation and from Python uh, syntaxes. Um, uh, and you want to convert it into Python style. For example, we have here an artist and when we create it uh, from the model, we are passing the nickname as you can see in the Pascal, I believe Pascal case like uh, nickname. But in Python uh, world, we are using snake case. Uh, so in this way, uh, how this model will understand that uh, the correct uh, thing that is passed should be put uh, into the nickname. We use it by using alias, like nickname. Uh, same in ORM, when you're using table names, for example, they are usually written mm, in the another uh, thing in another case not like a snake case uh, in python so in such a case uh, usually it is useful to um, get aliases uh, instead of pure names we also have serialization alias uh, this is a thing that works only for the serialization so for example as you can see here in the just uh, string representation, we will still have the nickname field, but when and in the single model dump, we will have a nickname. But when we will uh, dump the model into the dict using by alias, it will uh, show us the alias name in this uh, field, so like it was uh, taken from the place you've passed it into. Same for the validation uh, validation alias, but it works only on the validation step. So meaning that um, it will always uh, serialize into albums and represent an uh, albums, but during the um, actual validation step, it will uh, work with this uh, work word. 
we also have so-called validation alias, which is also a cool thing. For example, we have here a first name and last name for the Jamala. Uh, Jamala. And we are saying that these fields need to be filled from the data of the birth name uh, variable. Uh, for example, the first name is the um, second element of the um, iterable, and the uh, last name is the first one. And here we just pass in, in the class birth name. So Pydentic uh, works for you nicely here. It understands that this is the first name and this is the last name according to this alias path and converts it accordingly, as you can see it here. Uh, we also have a validation alias choices. Um, this means that you can pass different types of the um, input uh, marked like, for example, band or group. And uh, in any way, uh, the Pydentic will understand it that, that this is going to be a band uh, uh, attribute of the artist class. Like here, we are using group, for example, single, but it's uh, validated and um, updated into the band field here. Um, sorry, oh. one, one, one question related to this uh, um, artist model done by alias. Can we uh, somehow force to um, uh, dump by alias only specific uh, field? So for instance, in this uh, third example, we have nickname, uh, which is uh, camel case, uh, but music category, we would like to uh, uh, not uh, have it like uh, converted or alias to this music category and keep the genres uh, uh, there. Is there any possibility to pass only sure. the fields that we would like to have by alias, like separately? Yep. Yeah, uh, you're talking now about serialization stuff. And so, for example, when we will talk a bit about serialization later, you'll see that uh, with your own custom uh, thing and custom serialization, you can uh, return it only, not only like the nickname, but whatever you want. You can rewrite it any way you want using not only this uh, standard Python types or uh, pedantic types, you can also use annotated types with a special plain serialization functions that can do that work for you. I'll show right. you later okay. a bit about it. So again, uh, more information on this one about aliases and alias precedence. Um, this is the order of aliases. It's also a big topic to talk about uh, that I'm not going to work uh, in this presentation, but you are welcome to look into later. Uh, we also have a field constraints. You have seen it a bit uh, previously in the presentation, like uh, greater or equal, um, less than, less or equal, uh, multiple of uh, uh, two, for example, uh, other things like uh, string patterns or string lengths, and so on and so on. Um, I will not stop here much, just uh, so you would know that Pydantic provides you with special constraints on the fields, so it will um, raise a validation error or another kind of error that is uh, inherited from that error in uh, in case if your incoming data is not uh, valid against this field. Um, we also have so-called Pydantic validators. Um, so Pydentic validators are things that, that which job is actually to extend base Pydentic validation stuff. So as I told you, we have a validation for constraints, we have validation um, for fields, uh, basic fields like uh, integer strings, uh, enums, or uh, Pydentic uh, uh, types like email string, secret string, and so on. Uh, but Pydantic is flexible enough for you to write your own validators. And for example, here we are using annotated validators that you can use uh, during um, the definition of your class. For example, here we are defined in the list of annotated um, types. Uh, and since I am using after validator, uh, it will validate uh, the data that was uh, this class was filled uh, uh, with 
uh, by these functions like function double and functional square uh, check squares. So in this example, what's happening actually behind the scenes when you are um, uh, instantiating the my squared number uh, object, you are passing some parameters that are firstly uh, checked by the Pydantic itself uh, that they are integers, they are correct integers, and that they are uh, integers inside of your list here. Uh, when it's done, then your own validators are running on those uh, on, on that data. For example, here uh, it starts from after validator double. So it doubles uh, the data that you've given here. It comes four and 16, and then runs the second validator called check square, which actually checks that this numbers could be square uh, squared uh, with squared root and if that's correct then this data is actually filled in this uh, my squared number object <clears throat> um talking about the order how this validation goes so uh annotated validators have uh, several um kinds of them mm, we've seen here after validator but we have also a before validator which is running the before even the pydantic will uh try to validate um, if the incoming incoming data is integer here or not uh, and before the whole instantiation will start uh, we have plain validators, which is uh, mostly common like the previous one, and wrap validators, which is a huge topic to talk about because it can include both um, before after validator, before and after validator. Um, talking about the order, so for example, for the after validation, it will run from left to right. So first of all, it will validate, Pydantic will validate that the incoming data is integer. Then it will use this double function to uh, do some magic stuff there, like double the value. And then it will do another after validator that will uh, run the uh, squared number, for example. Um, but for before validators, it will, uh, and uh, plain validator, it will uh, work in um, a reverse order from the right to left. Um, you can read about it on uh, this annotated validators uh, page. So I'm, I'm not uh, staying here more, just that's, I, I, I think, enough. Uh, field and model validator. So except uh, annotated validators that are used mostly during class definition, we can use so-called field and model validators that are running uh, when the actual instantiation of the object begins. So for example, here we have a doc account. Uh, we have here a model configuration. This is a special um, uh, attribute of the Pydantic, um, which contains some configuration dict, which you also can update, extend, whatever you want. And we are passing here arbitrary types allow, true, for example. Why? Because uh, this Pydantic doc account model, we want to fill in also with the doc breed, our custom class, just as simple class this is so-called arbitrary arbitrary type which is which is not um visible by default uh by pedantic or python i mean um, during this uh, instantiation of the object so that's why we need to use arbitrary types a lot we have here a username the password which also is not um, represented in the string presentation of the object. Uh, and we have a breed, uh, which uses so-called one of field validators instance of. Um, so this validator checks that the breed you pass is actually the instance of this dog breed, your custom arbitrary type. We also have such a field validator that validates the username here. It checks that the username is actually uh, alphanumeric. Uh, for the validation, uh, you can uh, use both assert or uh, raising a value error, uh, since Pydantic understands both of them. But I'm using assert. Assert uh, thinks it is more, um, uh, I don't know, 
it is better for me to use since I can uh, write it in one string, let's say, without uh, all those if, else, and so on, and define the description of the or, uh, error on the same string. Um, we also have a model validator. So in case if of the field validator, it validates only the single field and in the order those fields were uh, defined in the model. For example, in this uh, validate username, uh, we have uh, so-called validation info, which is information about previously validated fields of this class. For example, uh, if there would be some other fields before the defined before the username, I don't know, age or something, uh, those fields will would be already validated and you could use them in this field validator in the username during the username validation. But you cannot use um, you cannot check and use the data from the password one, password two, since uh, it, they are not yet uh, validated and uh, put into the validation info. Uh, there is a way actually how you can do it, but it's not quite strict. So uh, we will omit it for now. Just understand that field validator is uh, working on the single um, field and can um, get uh, access to the previously defined um, attributes of this object. We also have a model validator. This is a model, uh, this is a validation for the whole model, meaning that the whole model could be uh, created and instantiated inside of Pydantic and then could be validated according to your custom rules. For example, uh, we can uh, be sure that password one and password two are equal um, and this um, model validation uh, stuff will work after the Pydantic model instantiation. Uh, there is another mod, mod called before, so you can do same stuff uh, to validate uh, the data before it's actually instantiated inside of Pydantic. Um, OK, so you can see here the errors, like doc account username barkey. It's not alphanumeric, so it says uh, like username must be alphanumeric. We have here the passwords, uh, which are not same. So it says like failed, assertion failed, password don't match. And here we have, ah, yeah, one more cool thing I wrote here, like a create model. You can mm, create uh, pedantic models dynamically, um, mostly like with using type, but in more um, an easier way just defining the fields like this one. This Eclipse uh, thing means that uh, by, by default it doesn't have nothing. So if you would like to, your field to have something by default, you will write it here. Um, and in this case, it says like validation error for dog account, uh, input should be an instant of dog, dog breed. Uh, so we can see that this instance of breed worked here for us. Okay. Now let's um, talk sorry, a bit. Can, can we get back for, for one moment to, to this previous slide? Uh, is this assertion some sort of um, officially documented way of doing those this uh, validation? I'm asking because uh, basically, uh, as far as I uh, know, um, using assertion in any sort of production code is not very a uh, good way to uh, do anything because we can simply disable assertion by passing flag yep. uh, into the uh, into the um, interpreter. So my question yes. here is, is this some sort of official way and this is something that we can use in the production itself? Yep, uh, thank you for that question. Yes, you're right. Uh, Pydantic has a description on it that it says uh, in case if you are um, Mm, disable the flag for the assertion checks. I, I don't remember exactly how it's called. Uh, the minus assertion o, won't... minus O. It's minus yes. O. The assertion will not work. Uh, so in this case, uh, it would be better to use the value error, uh, raising an a value error. Yeah, exactly. I'm... Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Fair enough. It it, it it's in the uh, in the pedantic docs about the validators. But since I'm not omitting anything um, and uh, disabling the uh, O, uh, I'm here working with the search and it looks fine, better than it would be with value error raising here with lots of if else, only because of that. 
Okay. Uh, now talking a about. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, uh, go on. A question in the chat. So, is there a way to disable validation for some certain models? Yep. The Pydantic provides you a special thing that uh, called validation of, uh, and you can use that attribute in your per field or per model at all. So mod in, during the model config configuration. In Pydantic uh, 2.5, this uh, thing is called in different way. I don't remember exactly, but yes, you can. The short answer is yes, you can. You can uh, disable the validation per field or even per the whole model itself. Okay, let's talk about Pydentic serialization. So Pydentic uh, uses the terms serialize and dump interchangeably. Both refer to the process of converting model to a dictionary or JSON encoded string. So it's not actually the serialization stuff. It's just a pedantic so-called serialization. That's why I'm saying pedantic serialization. Um, in pedantic world, uh, almost everything could be uh, converted into the dict. Uh, almost every model could be converted in, into dict, but. Uh, Pydentic uh, asks you and actually uh, wants you to use so-called model dump, model uh, dump JSON, or your own written model dump, I don't know, YAML file or something like that, uh, because it helps you to serialize your data um, deeply, firstly, uh, so um, deep uh, into your model and uh, nested models. And it also helps you to convert the data accordingly to your rules, not to the rules of uh, simple Python dict conversions um, or JSON conversions. So in this case, uh, we will talk a bit about dump dict. We have here, <clears throat> uh, for example, uh, credentials which has a username and the password, again, with a secret string and the field representation false, and this one exclude true field. This field means that this password will be excluded both from the representation uh, of the string uh, in your um, uh, standard output and from the um, actual serialize, serialized data like dict or the JSON with exclude true. You'll see it uh, a bit in, in details in the future. Uh, we have here some connector which use creds credentials or Xbox credentials class uh, and also use the annotated uh, field here which is any HTTP URL. Um, this is uh, this means that your data incoming data will be firstly uh, validated uh, and converted into um, identical any HTTP URL type. And then if you need, you can add plain serializer, uh, which will serialize your data into the uh, approach or into the um, representation you need in your serialization. So for example, here it uh, receives uh, the function, which will work uh, with your data during the serialization, uh, the returning type, and uh, the mode that states when this serialization should be used, uh, either during dump dict and dump JSON, or only, for example, here, only in JSON. Um, here I have, for example, any HTTP URL type, which has inner attribute called host. And in this case, for example, when I will serialize this class into JSON, um, instead of the whole URL, uh, with HTTPS uh, and, uh, um, I don't know, whole domain and so on and so on, uh, you will get only the host name. Um, here we also use in serialization alias, meaning that um, during the serialization into JSON, as we described here, it will be called like uh, host. This field will be called host. Um, you can do it same on um, um, your uh, other I don't know, preferences that you want to serialize in, if you want to serialize in a different way. That's what I was talking about, that you just uh, can not only show the field, for example, URL or the field that is shown in the alias and used by type alias. You can define here the 
actual small dick that will say like, I don't know, uh, any URL, uh, blah, 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 X host or something like that. Anything you would like, you can use it with uh, plain serializes here. Um, so let's look into the examples. We have here credentials so with username and password. Um, uh, we have here uh, defined the URL, uh, some DBMS, uh, which is not here, but it's a, a string in them. We are doing some PG connector model dump, just a simple single model dump. In this case, we will receive uh, the dict, which contains uh, also other identic uh, classes and types like URL type and the uh, uh, enum type. Uh, in case if you, for example, trying to convert into just a dict without using model dump, uh, you will not convert inner inner uh, objects. For example, here in a connector, we have credentials, which is an inner object of um, uh, credentials class. And as you can see in model dump, we, the model dump converts it by itself into the uh, plain dict, while uh, the dict conversion doesn't do such deep con uh, conversion for you. Um, here we are trying to model dump by alias and in JSON mode. Uh, so we will also receive the dict since this is a model dump in dict, not in JSON. But in this case, as you can see, we have a name called host attribute, which we defined here in validation alias. Uh, we also defined that we don't need the whole URL. We just need this uh, host. So it's my Postgres.com and the DBMS. Oh, my, can, can you see my screen? I'm here or not? Yeah, I see. Okay, cool. Because it was something with my internet connection. Okay. So um, also, yes, you can see the difference between dump, model dump and dict. Uh, in case of uh, dumping into the dict, you will actually get access to the password uh, and you can expose it using get secret value here. But in case of using model dump, um, you cannot get a password since uh, it will not be passed into the serialized dict at all. It will not exist there. So it gives you um, additional um, security um, for your passwords, for example, if you if you require one. In case if you are using exposed creds, exposed creds is uh, it, as you can see are same. Um, passwords but without exclude in the field so uh, it will be included in during our serialization into our JSONs or uh, dicts and it also used field serializer uh, which is used only in JSON or uh, dump dict uh, with small with JSON mode uh, this is just field serializer which will return your plain secret here uh, as I showed you in the uh, first slide, um, if you don't use this field serializer in your JSON serialization uh, string, serialized string, you will get just those stars. So in this case, we add field serializer and we can convert uh, the password into plain password if you require over here. As you can see here, we are using union or um, and Pydentic has a huge uh, thing about unions and discriminators, about the order in which um, your data will be parsed by Pydentic and instantiated. Um, and discriminators will help you um, will help your Pydentic model to understand into which of these two, Classes, for example, your past uh, 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 dict uh, should be parsed. I will not stop here much because this is a really huge uh, uh, topic to talk about. Uh, and I will just tell you that in such approach with a single or, it will use a so-called smart union. <clears throat> smart union means that if you pass in your connector the dict um, with uh, nested dict of credentials, the first one class that is uh, working fine for your uh, <clears throat> dict will be uh, parsed into this uh, object. That, that's, that's all that you need to know for now about it. Okay, 
we also have dump json uh it all it's also has same probably same um, uh, arguments list uh, like the uh, dump dict except uh, the mode for example um and as you can see here in the example, we are creating the Postgres connector uh, with the database with default value, with the schema name, uh, which is also default, uh, has default none and alias schema. So again, this is very useful. This alias thing is very useful. For example, why I've used here alias schema, because schema is, uh, for example, um, a reserved word by the Pydentic in the previous um, versions of the Pydentic, uh, uh, but uh, it will give you a warning that it was deprecated and so on, but still you need to try to use a, a schema alias if you, for example, are converting the data from the table or something like that, or you need to get uh, the connector uh, DSN. Um, so here we dump... Uh, so here we are, for example, creating a full PG connector. We using by using model validate from the dict, as I told you previously. We are mm, using the previously defined PG connector. We dump it into dict and exclude from the dict uh, creds uh, field creds attribute. So uh, what will be moved into PG connector? All other fields except uh, creds, for example, here. Um, and later we are um, filling the creds with exposed credentials. Um, okay, so here we have several examples on uh, main uh, parameters of this model dump, uh, both for dump JSON and just dump. Uh, if we uh, say that we need to include creds, it will um, dump uh, and serialize only the credentials, nothing else. For example, the whole object will be um, thrown, not, not, not just realized, okay, just the credentials stuff. Uh, we could exclude uh, unset uh, fields like database and schema. For example, if you can see here in full PG connector, um, we are defining uh, fields from the PG connector which didn't have database and schema name, and we are not uh, passing here database and schema name, so they are used by default. Uh, and we are excluding them here, and you will not receive it in the uh, dump JSON dump dump JSON. Uh, we can also exclude all fields that have a none. For example, here uh, schema name by default have uh, has none field. So in the resulting uh, serialized JSON, we will not have this schema as you can see, but we will have the database. Okay, and we can even exclude some fields inside of nested objects, like for example, credentials, this is a nested object and we want to exclude the password from it. So we just define the dict uh, with the set of uh, required fields to exclude or another dict if you have uh, further nested objects there. And as you can see here, we are not having any password in our um, Mm, dump JSON. Okay. I hope I have some time. Okay, I have 10 more minutes. So now we are moving to one of most interesting parts of Pydentic, which is called settings management. Actually, I like, the, I like this stuff because it helps you to simplify your configurations on your applications. It can help you to follow uh, the third rule of the 12 factor application uh, approach, meaning that configuration could be um, uh, separated from the whole application and could be uh, dif uh, differentiated dependently on the environment you are running on, uh, depending on the uh, setting sources you are using and so on. So the main stuff about this Pydentic settings management and why it's so cool, because it's also the Pydentic base model. So you can use same rules like you've seen previously by using the validation, serialization, aliases, um, anything you would like uh, to work with, except that Pydentic settings management also gives you opportunity to take um, um, 
require data from any config sources you like. By default, Pydentic base settings have has <clears throat> has four uh, main four main uh, setting sources. So the sources from where your configuration can can, can uh, come. Uh, they are defined in the Pydantic uh, settings, customized sources, uh, mm, not, not defined, but they are called and their order is defined in the settings, customized sources method, which I'm showing here only for the simplicity and from the understanding uh, the order of those uh, sources. Um, let me talk a bit about this base settings object. So this is a um, settings object, which, which is very simple. It includes only the environment name, for example. By default, this is a development. It also includes the vault, uh, which is inner uh, object uh, vault, which includes URL, which is HTTP URL field, and the token, which you can write whatever you want. But here I'm using annotated with the secret string and plain serializer, which uh, as I showed you previously, just serialize like with the field serializer, the secret value into the simple string in the JSON mod. <clears throat> we also have so-called model configuration, um, which defines um, some parameters for your base settings objects. For example, environment prefix. Um, there are situations when you in when in your environment are running several uh, applications. Some of them are called best app, another uh, I don't know another app, and you want to define which environment variables will go to which application. In such a case, you define this env prefix, and Pydentic will work for you uh, in defining those uh, um, environments and uh, variables from different sources uh, that. Uh, and, and di in, uh, differentiate which one of them are for this uh, settings object. It also has uh, end file encoding, um, which you can set for your encoding if needed. A so-called end nested delimiter. Um, for example, in uh, Pydentic uh, by settings uh, in the environment, you can pass the string, uh, which includes not only the end name, but also nested vault object. And for Pydantic to understand that object that you pass is the nested one in the string, you can uh, show which uh, delimiter is used uh, to define for nested objects. Uh, you can define here the end file, dot end file, as you can see here, the secrets directory for the um, um, Docker secrets or Kubernetes secrets or any other stuff you'd like to use for those uh, things. And the main order of uh, how these sources are re read and merged into outcoming source is next. So um, uh, they, are, uh, they are read from left to right. Uh, the one that is closer to the left and has higher priority than those on the right end. For example, uh, it will read in the secret file, in the .n file, in the your environment settings, environments, and then uh, during uh, initialization by default. If it's it will if Pydentic will not find the field in these fields, then and only then it will use this default value. Let's talk about these sources a bit. So we can define our base setting in init source uh, just by instantiating it, like env name test, vault, passing the vault and token and so on. And in uh, during the serialization with mod JSON, as you can see, I'm using mod JSON just because I want to see this token in as a plain string, not the secret string. Uh, I can see that uh, env name is a, a Oh, sorry, this is a wrong here. I've put here a wrong. So it should be here uh, uh, test and vault. Uh, this is a wrong picture here, just the description. Okay, I'll, I'll fix it later. Uh, it will be the same like this defined here. Uh, the secret file source will read from uh, your source defined here, uh, secrets dear. And it will uh, write, for example, I'm writing here a secret environment, and then I'm reading from that environment. Uh, as you can see, I'm not um, 
passing here the environment name so it should be uh read it should read from the secret file and in secret file i have secret and so environment name is secret event but everything else is the same like it was defined here like my world oh, oh sorry like it was defined here my world and some token then i define for example dot n source so one more time um init source has a higher priority in this order secret uh, file source has a lower priority now after i have a, a secret file source in my namespace i am creating a dot n file which i defined uh, my application nf prefix uh nf delimiter vault url my secret vault and same for the token super secret token so again uh pydentic reads uh, the secret file and reads .n file. It can see that in .n file I have changed the URL and the token. So it, but not the end name. So it defines the URL like my secret file vault and super secret token. But the end name, uh, end name is uh, stays same like it was defined in the secret secret env, as you can see in the, during the read, uh, reading of the file sec, uh, secret file. Okay, and the last one is environment source. For example, I want to define now um, environment and uh, Pydentic will read this file secret dot uh, env environment settings. And in environment settings, I have best app, vault uh, delimiter token, QA token, and uh, but not the vault URL, my secret vault URL. In such a case, it will uh, create uh, merge dicts in env name QA because I'm using it the best env name. Vault URL will stay same like it was defined in the dot env source here, but the token uh, will be used uh, that was defined in the environment uh, here. Sorry, and last but not least, custom source and priority. Pydentic wouldn't be Pydentic if you couldn't um, customize anything you want in the Pydentic world. So as you can see, I'm uh, using here settings customize sources method, and I am uh, using another order of um, sources from which Pydentic will read and merge uh, merge uh, the uh, configs. Um, and I'm also defining a new YAML setting source. Um, to make it able for Pydentic to read from the YAML file, for example. Uh, how I do it, I create some class or a function, uh, and I need to pass to this uh, settings customized source method, actually a callable thing. It will, could be uh, uh, an object that can be called um, like, oh, it's not here. I'm sorry, guys, I forgot it to put it here, maybe. Yes, so uh, you can define your YAML setting source. Um, and give me a sec, maybe. I'll reshare my screen. Wait a sec. Because it's required. OK, it's here. Um, Okay, give me a sec. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yeah. Yeah. All code uh, is uh, I've placed on the GitHub so you can look it there later on. So for example, here I am defining YAML setting source, uh, which is inherited to, from the Pydentic base setting source. And um, it has a call method, um, which is called by the inner uh, Pydentic uh, method uh, during uh, instantiation of the object, base settings object. So it's just, it does nothing much, just reads from the YAML file and uh, converts, the dict, uh, converts it into the dict. So, these sources, what they should do, they uh, should uh, they they should be a tuple of some callables. 
It could be either just a function that returns something or an object which you instantiate, for example, with setting class. In the such case, it has um, uh, in, it, in, in it method which uh, adds settings classes and so on and uses them uh, to understand from where to take YAML file. And where I define the YAML file, uh, I have so-called so, so new settings config dict. Uh, which instead of the previous one with uh, settings config dict, uh, identic uh, default uh, stuff, I'm I'm defining my new settings config dict, and I define YAML file uh, attribute that could be used. Then in my settings, I define this YAML file and where it's situated, and I can uh, use it in my uh, YAML setting source uh, to read from. So that's how it works. It takes uh, the data from the uh, settings configuration, not the data, the path uh, that you've described in the new settings uh, configuration dict, and then uses it in your own source, for example. You can write it in your own way. The most important thing that the source needs to be a callable and it should return the dict that can be used uh, during deep um, instantiation of the object. Um, let me return to my... <clears throat> in my presentation. Okay. So here I have custom YAML source uh, where I define just a dict uh, where environment name is stage and, and dict is stage token. I'm not defining here, as you can see in this, uh, in this uh, new settings config dict, uh, the UTF or anything else, because uh, I'm inheriting from the settings a class which already defined these fields uh, in here. So all this stuff is also inherited by my new settings um, class. And it's written here. And when I call my model damp, I've just get the environment name stage and uh, also change the token. So for example, I have YAML uh, file uh, prioritized and that's why it will be on the top of all other um, sources, which we defined here. And in such case, token will be stage token. For example, uh, as you can see, um, and and settings have lower priority than my custom YAML source. So even if I define here best app environment name prod, uh, it will still Sorry, I will update those. It will still uh, run the stage env, as you can see it here. Okay, so in such a way, you can define your own, for example, um, uh, vault source, uh, I don't know, any other source, JSON source, anything you want. You just create a, a setting source and you uh, define it uh, into in, in your setting customized source method. That's all. Okay, so mostly my presentation in that is done. I just wanted to tell you that actually the pedantic world is really huge and we just scratched the tip of the iceberg. And here are several uh, things you could look into, more details like arbitrary class instances. Um, this is instances that I was talking about um, that you can create on your own for ORM models, for example. Unions and discriminators to for Pydentic to understand uh, which uh, in which order to use your types uh, during the um, parsing. Automatically excluded attributes, uh, private fields, class method, and so on. Model method and properties. There are, there are lots of uh, properties that can be used on your models uh, and pedantic types, which, which you can use for defining your custom types, maybe token, bear, whatever you want. That's pretty much it from my um, presentation. Any questions? questions looks like nobody wants to ask questions to this funny kitten 
Yes. So, Alexander, I would like, on behalf of all the participants, to thank you for your performance. Uh, it was really exciting to hear you. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining our meeting today. Uh, the recording and the presentation will be shared with you as a follow-up. So, I uh, hope to see you on our next event. Have a great Friday and weekend ahead. Yes, sorry, but we have the additional question in the uh, oh, chat. Yes, yes. So, uh, so, Alexander, what do you think is Bidentic sweet point, if any? Yeah, um, so Bidentic has one weak point that could be called a performance, maybe. Uh, why? Because sometimes um, mm, users, developers are trying to use too much uh, nested models. And in such case, for your serialization, uh, your actual uh, serialization will take a while, maybe even more um, than it will be in a simple uh, serialization written by your hands. But again, you can customize it, first of all. Second, Pydantic has a uh, first class, let's say, documentation on um, improving your performance by using your own types, annotated types, uh, and uh, changing the serialization tools, like instead of uh, simple JSON, using some uh, simple JSON or, or something like that. So everything in the Pydantic world could be changed. And I think because of it, uh, all weak sites that we can have can be reduced. Okay, no questions. Thank you. Yeah. It seems like we, we are out of time. So again, thank you, Alexander. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.